Good day to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Thursday, the 9th day of September 2021, and you've tuned into the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. So good to have you. We're going to talk about several things today. We have Larry, we have Mindy, we have more activity potentially brewing across the Atlantic Basin, including the potential for a interesting system that might develop in the eastern Atlantic and move its way to the central and eventually maybe the western Atlantic. A few hints about that. Those tabs over there, the uh, 2021 Global. See, these guys right here, we'll get to those. A little sneak preview, a little teaser for you to hold on till the end as we do look ahead at more activity coming up. It's almost the peak of hurricane season. I mean, we're practically on it, so all of this would be expected. So let's start out with a satellite animation, courtesy of our friends at Tropical Tidbits. There's Olaf in the eastern Pacific getting ready to make landfall in the next day or so along the southern Baja. So Cabo San Lucas and vicinity, you're going to have some issues with that. We had Mindy that came in surprisingly fast overnight, developed pretty quickly there, and made its way onshore. Now it's offshore, south of Savannah. Then we have Larry over here. 90 mile per hour wind with Larry developing a little bit more of a concentrated CDO or central dense overcast as it passes well to the east of Bermuda. Bermuda is located right there. And I'll show you a live uh, video feed from Bermuda here in just a moment. First, if I can get back to my tracking map, there we go. Uh, let's zoom out and get the bigger picture here. These are all of our deployments from our permanent cams. We'll shut those off for just a moment. Um, let me refresh this page just to get a new perspective on things. I was messing with it earlier, and I've kind of got it all jumbled up there. There we go. Much better. So, uh, down here we have Olaf. This is Mindy. And then here is Larry. And we're going to have some more activity out here in the tropical Atlantic and maybe even some more activity up in this area. It's busy. It's Like I said, it's near the peak time of the season. And so this is to be expected. So let's see what we got. Well, first, here is Olaf, and it's about a 75 mile per hour hurricane. And more strengthening is likely. And uh, hurricane warnings are up, obviously, for portions of the Baja down here. And our friends in Cabo San Lucas and vicinity. All of this area, La Paz up here. And there is some elevation in here, some rugged terrain. It's not just flat like the Everglades. Uh, so this will bring some... Heavy rain and potential for flash flooding, mudslides, a storm surge along the windward side where the wind pushes the ocean on shore, rough surf, you name it. And a good chunk of the southern Baja is going to feel this from Olaf. And then as we can see, as we back out, it should eventually turn back to the northwest and then west and then southwest as it dies away over a more stable environment with cooler water temperatures to its west. Then we have Mindy over here. We're going to get to this in just a moment, all right? First, though, Larry. Larry is passing. Well, let's just take a look. There's Bermuda, Hamilton area, and it's about 180 miles or so. This is our little distance calculator on the interactive map from Hurricane Track Insider, something available to our patrons, part of their crowdfunding support. And this shows us 180 miles or so from Hamilton in Bermuda, and it's got about 90 mile per hour winds, pressure 966. I got to tell you real quick, looking at the satellite animation, it looks pretty healthy, has some lightning in the periphery and some near the central dense overcast there. We got Bermuda sitting over here, some rain showers, squally conditions, just kind of a yucky day out there. I can show you what that looks like too, real quick from Howard's cam, if this will pop up. And uh, this is a live look. Kind of a dreary day, a little bit breezy uh, down at the beach. The ocean is off in the distance. Howard does not live right on the ocean. There's the ocean back there, if I'm not mistaken. That does look like the blue horizon, right? The blue ocean and the horizon line. Uh, so kind of a dreary day, a little bit breezy, rough along the beaches, but that's about it. Uh, fill up those cisterns a little bit, some tank filling rains, but nothing too heavy. Because again, the core there the central dense overcast, the CDO, this part right here, that is the meat of the hurricane. These peripheral rain bands, yeah, they have some punch to them. They can, and they can bring some gusty winds in a period of heavy rain or two. 
but that is about it. And uh, eventually, uh, Larry is going to move up here towards um, the Avalon Peninsula, and St. John's here in Newfoundland could be on that right front quadrant. We'll see. Maybe it'll fade more to this way and keep you guys on the west side. That is still a couple of days away, so we'll watch and see how this pans out. And then eventually, Larry's remnants will make uh, their way up to the waters just off of Greenland, and this will actually transport a good deal of heat and moisture up that way. And, you know, that's not a good thing for the Greenland ice cap. Not making too much of it, but it really is going to transport what we call this heat flux into the energy field up there of the jet stream and the westerlies. And you get these intrusions that come in from the tropics. That is exactly what they are, these big heat engines, even though they transition from purely tropical to a more extra-tropical or post-tropical system, there will be a lot of moisture and an influx of heat up that way as Larry uh, gets on to becoming more post-tropical in nature. Now, let's take a look down here at uh, Mindy. Mindy formed rather quickly yesterday, made landfall down here near Cape San Blas and uh, the Apalachicola area, moved its way up, now sitting offshore here south of Savannah not expected to regenerate into a tropical storm or anything uh, of that nature offshore, but uh, it could. I mean, look at what it did already. And in fact, um, here's the satellite picture of it now. But I want to take you back to last night. An interesting tweet from a good friend of ours, Tim Bruno. It looks like it had an eye feature. And he talks about that. It's like it has an eye. It has a freaking eye. And it's just more of him saying... You know, wow, look at that. He wasn't literally meaning that it's a well-developed eye. I mean, he knows the difference. But it certainly looks like an eye feature in there. This may be at a little higher elevation. There's a, certainly a, a well-defined band right there. But this just goes to show you how quickly these systems can spin up and bring impacts. And speaking of impacts, this is some video here real quick. Uh, this is down in the Carabell area, I do believe, in Franklin County. This is courtesy. Hey, it says it right there. It's tagged as Carabell. I know my areas. I didn't even notice that. Uh, this is from Doug Kiesling's website, stormchasingvideo.com, and his YouTube channel. Very, very popular that channel is. And uh, one of the stringers down there shot some video. There's some power lines down. So, yeah, these uh, storms can pop up and cause some mayhem with little to no warning. That is why you have to be on your toes during hurricane season and take every one of these seriously. That's what we talk about. You know, that everything has impacts. It doesn't have to be a big time Ida, a Katrina, an Andrew, or a Camille. You know, maybe it is for you and you like, yeah, I'm not gonna pay attention to it unless it's a hurricane and if that, a powerful hurricane. You know what, that's fine. We do what we can to let you know what's going on out there. But these are the impacts, and that's what Mindy brought to our friends down there along the Florida Panhandle and beyond. Some heavy rain, some squally conditions, and uh, that's all passing out into the Atlantic now. What else do we have? Well, a couple of systems here, 30% chance of further development. It won't surprise me if this ends up more north and then eventually comes up here towards South Texas some of the guidance hinting at that and that's just the way things have been this year nothing has turned out exactly the way we thought it would initially and why would it the weather's always going to keep us on its uh keep us on our toes meanwhile out here 50 percent chance of development from this system coming off africa i think even if it does develop it'll kind of stay out here and maybe curve back and just kind of get lost out here and not be of any consequence but what you don't see is we do have some tropical wave activity sitting out here. In fact, let me just go back to the original satellite picture. Yeah, there it is. You can barely see it right there, uh, at least on this satellite animation extent. we got to watch this. There's some strong winds out here now coming in from the southwest, but this represents energy, and this will move its way to the west and west-northwest nor west with time, and you never know where that could end up later on down the road. Um, also wanted to show you this. This is the reflectivity here from Mark Nissenbaum's long radar site. These animations, well, the site's not long, but the animation is. Um, there's Mindy after making landfall 
and has moved out into the Atlantic there. Like a 175 frame loop. You know what? Just for fun, let me go down here and change it to 200. We'll add 50 more frames. And it goes back to not long after it made a landfall there. And uh, yeah, there you go. As I try to get my telestration, there's the center tracking along. You'll see it comes up here right there just after making landfall down in Franklin County. Very cool radar animation from Mark Nessenbaum. I already went over this, so here. I talk about Storm 2K often, and this is a big reason why, because folks are looking at stuff. You get a consensus of what people are talking about, and I wanted to bring this up. These are those things that I was teasing earlier. As we get later in the month, it looks like, and this is the thread on there, the discussion of the models out through day 16. People here can do so in a civil an orderly fashion. They don't just post a 12-day or a 15-day operational shot of a Cat 5 hurricane off of some major city and then just say, I'm just going to leave this right here. There's context. It's a smart way of talking about it. And one of the things that jumped out at me as we scroll down was this post right here from South Florida Kane, SFL Kane, right there, you see? And um, this is the Euro Ensemble, the SpaghettiOs plot, as we call it, clustering some energy here. These are the different ensemble members. A snapshot, if you will. When is this? This would be valid way out in time, around 12 days or so. So beyond the 10-day time frame, but this is that signal that we have to start looking for. And it's not just one singular area like that, you know, or that. There's a cluster there, more chatter, if you will, in the ensemble guidance. So that's something to watch. And then adding to that, the spaghetti plots here that we see from Weather Nerds, annotated here from uh, this poster. Kevin did a good job. And I can show you this version of it where you can actually put it into motion. This is from the 6Z. Uh, no, this is the 0Z, I think. Let me think. Let's see where it is. Um, it's either the 6Z or the 0Z. I think it's, for, yes, the 0Z Ensembles. Sorry, I had to make sure I knew what I was talking about. This is the 0Z Ensemble uh, plot, and you can tell some activity here, maybe some activity here. That's what the uh, other SpaghettiO plot uh, was showing. Uh, there's Larry. This is Mindy. There's the reason I'm a little worried. Not worried. That's an overstatement. Um, I'm watching closely the possibility that some energy ends up here in the lower Rio Grande Valley and then there's more energy trying to gather in the eastern Pacific. The bottom line, you know, it's peak season and we have a lot to watch. It's not over, not even by a long shot. Then we probably are going to get a more favorable Madden Julian oscillation setting up towards the end of September going into October and that's where you start to really light up the Caribbean and the possibility for more golf development. So lots to keep up with as we go forward. Lots to keep up with today. Larry out there going past Bermuda. We went over all of that. The bottom line, things are busy. You know what? I wanted to mention this because I would be remiss if I skipped it. And I don't like to be remiss, whatever that word means. <laughs> Rip current statement. I talked about this a lot, so we might as well follow up. You go to weather.gov, scroll down, and click on Rip current statement. That will take you to a list of all of the WFOs, Weather Forecast Offices. For example, this is out of San Juan. You can scroll down. Hey, my hometown, Wilmington. You can scroll down. There's New York. And you just find the area that you're interested in. You say, well, I'm down here along the low country of South Carolina. Great. Well, there's the RIP current statement. Coastal hazard message from Charleston. What is it? Well, it's all about the dangerous RIP currents. You can read about it here. There's Tallahassee. This is related to golf uh, activity. There's Mount Holly, New Jersey. The point being, we told you Larry was going to generate the swells. It has done so. They're still propagating outward. Go to the Weather Service website, weather.gov. Click on that little rip current statements or beach hazard statement and read it. And you can be in the know. The weekend is upon us. It's coming up tomorrow and beyond. And here's all this information these swells are going to be out there for the next couple of days and we got to keep you safe because if you're not there watching me here 
you know, there's really not much reason for me to do this anymore. So I want to make sure you stay safe out there. All right? All right. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. I appreciate it. It's good to talk with you. I am Mark Sedleth, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll do it again tomorrow.